This arrangement was first demonstrated by Professor Edwin Henry Barton and is known as Barton's Pendulums. This pendulum is with the heavy bob and is called the driver pendulum. The other pendulums have bobs of lighter weights. One of them has the same length as that of the driver pendulum. This one. This has the same natural frequency as that of the driver pendulum. This has a shorter length and therefore higher natural frequency and this is longer and has lower natural frequency. When the driver pendulum is allowed to oscillate freely, it transmits the energy of oscillation to the other pendulums. The one with the same length achieves the maximum amplitude. This is what we call resonance. These two pendulums have lower amplitude and is example of forced vibration. After some time, the amplitude of the driver pendulum decreases due to damping. But the amplitude of this pendulum is still high. Now this become the driver pendulum and this one the driven. Watch carefully how the amplitude of this one increase. Also notice that all the pendulums are not oscillating in the same phase. From this video, we get a fair bit of conception about forced vibration and resonance. For better concept, we have to do some maths, that means calculus. In forced vibration, the oscillator is always under the influence of three forces. Number one, restoring force, which tend to bring the oscillator back to the equilibrium position. Number two, the damping force, which is proportional to the velocity of the oscillator and act opposite to that of the restoring force. Number three, the driving force, which is an external force applied to the oscillator. The differential equation for such oscillator is this. Here, GT is the driving force function. This equation is called a non-homogeneous second-order differential equation with constant coefficients. These type of equations have a solution of the type y equal to yc plus capital Y. Here, yc is the general solution of this equation and is called the complementary solution. Capital Y is the particular solution and depend on the nature of the function gt. For forced vibrations, we will be interested in external forces which are periodic in nature, that is gt equal to f0 cos omega t or f0 sin omega t. Forced vibration and resonance without damping. Here, this is the differential equation. The complementary solution is this. The particular solution is this. A and B is calculated by the method of undetermined coefficients. we get A equal to this and B equal to 0. Now taking boundary conditions Y equal to 0 when T equal to 0 and Y dash equal to 0 when T equal to 0 in order to solve C1 and C2, we get C1 equal to this and C2 equal to 0. Therefore, the solution is this. Here, the displacement is the sum of two periodic functions. The amplitude of this periodic function is controlled by another periodic function. The amplitude showing periodic variation is an example of beats. In case of resonance, that is when omega zero is equal to omega, the particular solution cannot be this because in that case, it will become impossible to evaluate the value of the constants. So this is taken as the particular solution. Here, A equal to 0 and B equal to this. The general solution is therefore this. 
Here, amplitude of the third term increases infinitely with time. This is actually not possible because there is always some damping. Forced vibration and resonance with damping. Here, this is the differential equation. Therefore, this is the complementary solution and this is the particular solution. The solution is therefore this. The first part has an exponential function with a negative power. Therefore, it becomes zero as time goes by. As long as this does not become zero, displacement is due to both these parts having frequencies this and this. The amplitude in this case varies as in the case of beats. This motion is called transient motion where the natural frequency of the oscillator omega zero and the frequency of the driving force omega fight with each other. When the exponential term comes down to zero, this part becomes zero and this part take over. That means the driving force frequency wins the battle and now the oscillator oscillates with the driving force frequency. This motion is called steady state motion. In case of resonance, the particular solution remains the same because there is no difficulty in finding the constants. Therefore, the particular solution at resonance is this. Here, the amplitude is this and become infinitely high when the damping is very small, that is, k is almost equal to zero. Phase lag at steady state, case one, omega zero equal to omega. The oscillating body lags behind by quarter of a cycle than the driving force when the steady state of motion is reached. Case two, omega zero is much greater than omega. When omega zero is much bigger than omega, and for very small damping, this term approaches zero from the positive side and this angle can be taken as zero. That is, when omega zero is much bigger than omega, then the oscillator oscillates in the same phase with the driving frequency at steady state. Case number three, omega zero is much less than omega. When omega zero is much less than omega and the damping is small, this term approaches zero from the negative side and this angle can be taken as pi. That is when omega zero is much smaller than omega, then the oscillator lags half a cycle behind the driving frequency at steady state.